Hi Bookish Besties, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, it is time to do my November Book of the Month predictions. <music> So November seems to be a pretty light publishing month. There weren't very many releases in general and there didn't really seem to be very many big releases, if any big releases at all. So I really feel like my predictions are very, very tentative, especially after the selections that Book of the Month made for October. I really feel like they were all over the place for the month of October and I have no idea what they are going to do for November and definitely not for December. So we are going to see how accurate I am. As per usual, my predictions are going to be separated into five distinct genres categories, but in total I'm only allowed to make 20 predictions. So some categories might be lighter than others, but in total my predictions cannot exceed 20. Now before I jump into the predictions, I did want to mention that there is already an add-on that you can add to your box now if you haven't already gotten it, or you can add it for the month of November. It is actually a limited special edition of Bloodguard by C.C. Robson. Now it seems like Book of the Month might be trying to get in on the special edition Sprayed Edge game because this book definitely has sprayed edges, and to my knowledge I think this is the first time they've ever done anything like that. And I think that will be a game changer if they do decide to try to invest in books in this way. As far as I know, this book is still available. So you might want to add it to your box if you haven't already, if you are interested in this book. But I just wanted to go ahead and let you know that it is on there and available. As per usual, we are going to start with the mystery thriller horror genre category. We are going to start with a book called The Lake of Lost Girls by Katherine Green. It says it's 1998 and female students are going missing at Southern State University in North Carolina. But freshman just Jessica Thadley, once a bright and responsible student, is going through her own struggles. Just as her life seems to be careening dangerously out of control, she suddenly disappears. 24 years later, Jessica's sister Lindsay is desperately searching for answers and uses the momentum of a new chart-topping true crime podcast that focuses on cold cases to guide her own investigation. Soon, interest reaches fever pitch when bodies of the long-missing women begin turning up at a local lake, which leads Lindsay down a disturbing road of discovery. In the present, one sister searches to untangle a complicated web of lies. In the past, the other descends even deeper into a darkness that will lead to her ultimate fate. This propulsive and chilling suspense is a sharp examination of sisterhood and the culture of true crime. I'm absolutely loving the synopsis of this because it has the true crime podcast element. Is this a trope that is now being overdone? Probably, but for the most part, I tend to really enjoy books that feature it, especially if they are well done. I cannot say whether or not this is going to be one of those audiobooks that has like a full cast narration doing the podcast or anything like that. But overall, I just like the premise of this in general. It definitely sounds like it's going to be dual timeline. You are going to have the sister in the past who is the one that gets murdered and then you are going to have her sister in the future trying to uncover what actually happened to her. I am not familiar with this author Catherine Green at all but I do believe that I have heard of her previous release called The Woods Are Waiting. So if you have read Catherine Green please let me know. I would be interested to know your thoughts because I think that this is definitely one that I'm going to put on my radar and if it is selected for book of the month I will absolutely be reading it. All right this next one is a fun one that kind of just came on my radar. It sounds like it's going to be a little bit more on the cozy maybe even satirical side. It says it's for fans of Agatha Christie and Murder, She Wrote. It is called The Author's Guide to Murder, and it's actually written by three authors, Beatrice Williams, Lauren Willig, and Karen White. And Beatrice Williams has definitely been featured on Book of the Month in the past, but her historical fiction. So I think it's really interesting that she's collaborating on this murder mystery type story. It says, there's been a sensational murder at historic Castle Kinloch, a gothic fantasy of gray granite on a remote island in the highlands of Scotland. Literary superstar Brett Saffron Presley has been found dead under bizarre circumstances. Years ago, Presley purchased the castle as a showpiece for his brand and to lure paying guests with a taste for writerly glamour. Now it seems the castle has done him in, or possibly one of the castle's guests has. Detective Chief Inspector Yuan McIntosh, a local with no love for literary Americans, finds himself with the unenviable task of extracting statements from three American lady novelists. Prime suspects are Cat de Noir, a slinky erotic writer, Cassie Pringle, a southern mom of six juggling multiple cozy mystery series, and Emma Endicott, a New England blue blood and author of critically acclaimed historical fiction. The women claim to be best friends writing a book together, but the author's stories about how they know Brett Saffron Presley don't quite line up, and the detective is getting increasingly suspicious. Why did the authors really come to Castle Kinlaw? A crafty locked room mystery, a pointed satire about the literary world, and a tale of unexpected friendship and romance. This novel has it all, as only three best-selling authors can tell it. So I have no idea whether or not this is something that Book of the Month would feature, but like I said, it has at least one author that they featured in the past, and they have definitely been getting in on the cozy mystery game. And so I think that this would be something fun that they might like to introduce to everybody. So this is one definitely 
definitely to keep an eye out for. And then this next one is actually a debut mystery and I thought it sounded really intriguing and I absolutely love the setting. It is called The Ghosts of Waikiki by Jennifer K. Morita. It says, after the newspaper she works for folds and the freelance assignments no longer pay the bills, Maya Wong reluctantly returns to her native Hawaii to ghostwrite controversial land developer Parker Hamilton's biography. But when the Hamilton patriarch is found dead under suspicious circumstances, Maya is unwittingly drawn into the investigation. Maya's family and friends aren't happy about her work for Hamilton and now with her ex, Detective Koa Yamada on the case, she's forced to contend with the very person she was determined to avoid. All too soon, Maya is dodging assailants and digging for clues while juggling girls' nights out with her old BFFs and weekly family dinners. Convinced the police are after the wrong man, Maya is determined to stop the killer before it's too late. Like I said, I'm interested by the premise. I'm definitely interested in the setting. So I think that this is definitely one that I have on my radar to read. All right, moving on into the romance category, we have the newest release by Sophie Cousins called Is She Really Going Out With Him? Sophie Cousins has been featured on Book of the Month in the past, which makes it far more likely that she would be featured again, which is why I think that this is a top contender for the romance category in November. This says, columnist Anna Appleby has left her love life behind her after a painful divorce. Who needs a man when she has two kids, a cat, and uncontested control of the TV remote? Besides, she'd rather be single than subject herself to the hell of online dating. But her office rival is vying for her column and no column means no stable source of income. In a desperate attempt to keep her job, Anna finds herself pitching a unique angle. Seven dates, all found offline, chosen by her children. From awkward encounters to unexpected connections, Anna gamely begins to put herself out there, asking out waiters, the mailman, and even her celebrity crush. But when a romantic connection appears where she least expect it, will she be brave enough to take another chance on love? So again, this is just going to be another cute, fun rom-com. I have enjoyed Sophie Cousins in the past. Her books have been nothing mind-blowing or anything, but if you have enjoyed her, this is definitely one that you will want to keep your eye out for in November. All right, and then oddly enough, this next romance is also set in Hawaii. So we have a couple of Hawaii releases coming out. This book is called The Maui Effect by Sarah Ackerman. Iwa Young's life is high in the Maui rainforest. As a field biologist, she's happiest in the company of trees and birds and waterfalls. When a developer arrives with plans for a so-called eco-resort in the middle of a forest full of endangered species, Iwa puts all her energy into the fight to protect it. But a chance encounter threatens to distract her. His name is Dane Parsons, a big wave surfer from California. Iwa has a few unbreakable rules and at the top of her list, never date a surfer. Dane is part of an underground group of big wave riders and his connection to the ocean runs deep. When he meets Iwa, he can't get her out of his mind, but Iwa wants nothing to do with Dane until he offers to help protect her beloved forest and waterfall. Always on the hunt for the ultimate ride, Dane suddenly glimpses something even greater. In this thunderous love story, we travel deep into the Maui rainforest and hop across the globe from Hawaii to California to Portugal, chasing waves the size of nine-story buildings where the unthinkable is always just one breath away. So I very much love the environmental aspect to this. We have somebody who is a biologist and she's worried that the force in which she works is going to be demolished for an eco resort. And she's going to fall in love with somebody who is trying to help her save this rainforest. So that definitely speaks to my heart. I can tell you that. We are probably going to learn a lot about the rainforest and the creatures that reside within it. I have never read anything from Sarah Ackerman before. I had never really heard of her, but going through her backlist, it kind of looks like a lot of what she's written in the past might be historical fiction. So this could be something very different from anything that she's written in the past. And I am really, really intrigued by this one. So this one's certainly on my radar. And then the final book that I have for the romance category is a book called The Co-op by Tara DeWitt. It says, Lorraine Levine and Deegan Leeds had one short and contentious summer fling when they were teens, certainly nothing to build a foundation on. But a decade later, when their grandmothers have left them with shared ownership of their dilapidated Santa Cruz building, they're thrust back together and have to figure out how to brace up the pieces. Lorraine has the money, but in order to access her trust, she has to be married. Deegan has the construction expertise, but lacks the funds. A deal is struck, marry for however long it takes to fix up the property, collect a profit, and cut ties. Thrust into a home without walls, Lorraine and Deegan quickly learn that it's easy to hide behind emotional ones, even in a marriage. But with all the exposure and pitfalls that come with living with the opposite sex and none of the perks, much to their growing mutual frustration, they'll also have to learn what it means to truly cooperate as a team. Filled with crackling tension, the co-op is a steamy second chance romance about restoration and renovation and uncovering all the things that build character within ourselves. It's about the never ending construction project that partnership is and finding enjoyment at every stage. So this is a second chance romance, but it also seems like it's going to be a fake dating slash marriage situation because once again, there's like an inheritance that can't be gotten unless the other person is married. So I'm really curious to know how often this happens in real life because I didn't really know that that was such a thing, but it is in so many romance novels. But this is definitely one that I have seen kind of going around and it caught my eye. So I wanted to mention it here. All right, moving on into the contemporary slash literary fiction category. As per usual, this is definitely one that is the fullest. We are going to start with the newest release by Emma Gray called Pictures of You. Emma Gray has been featured on Book of the Month in the past with her book called, I think it was The Last Love Note or something to that effect. And this was pretty recently. So I do think that she is a strong contender for this category. It says, when Evie Hudson wakes in an unfamiliar hospital room, she thinks she's fresh out of a teenage 
party with her best friend Brie, except Brie isn't around anymore and high school was years ago. Evie had just survived the crash that killed her husband Oliver, whom she can't remember either. After suffering a traumatic loss of memory, she's left to connect the dots. But how? Enter Drew, a promising photographer whose chance encounter with Evie unravels the elusive details of her marriage and her husband's death. As Drew watches Evie stitch the story of her life together, secrets emerge that might shatter both of their worlds. This tangled second chance romance leads Evie to question every decision she ever made. This time around, she's seeing all the things she missed and the life she gets to choose. So I'm actually really intrigued by the premise of this one. You have a woman who is waking up in a hospital. She has no idea what's happened. Apparently she's just survived a crash that killed her husband, but there's going to be a lot more to that. So maybe there could be a little bit of a mystery aspect to this, but it also sounds like she's going to have a new love story after this accident. So if you read The Last Love Note by Emma Gray, please let me know what you thought because this one has my interest and I could be willing to pick this one up. Next, we have a debut called Running Out of Air by Lily Sutton. Evelyn and Sophie, sisters and best friends, were known as one of the climbing world's strongest teams, but that was before Evelyn had an affair with Sophie's husband. Okay, we're not off to a great start. Now they can't even be in the same room together. That is until they're both offered a mountaineer's dream, a chance to summit the 8,000 meter peak Yama Parvat. Sophie has been aimless since Evelyn's betrayal. She hasn't summited a Himalayan mountain in nearly two years. All the joy drained from the sport for her, and this trek offers a chance to reestablish herself as a top climber before her sponsors withdraw their funding. Evelyn has been happy with Miles since he left Sophie, but guilt continues to shadow her, clouding her judgment and the ability to move forward. Now she's willing to gamble everything for the chance to be part of the first team to summit this as yet unclimbed mountain and prove herself a capable leader. Stranded during a devastating storm on top of the world, Evelyn and Sophie are forced to climb together whether or not they make it off the mountain alive hinges on their trust in one another. Something lost years ago as they face down the question of how much they're willing to sacrifice to get it all back. So I definitely think that this could be featured on Book of the Month. It definitely is going to have those complex relationship dynamics, but I do not know how much I love the idea of a story that is based around cheating. You have two sisters who were obviously best friends since birth for the most part, and they are a dynamic mountain climbing duo. And then one of them sleeps with the husband of the other. And I just don't love that. And to me, that is kind of like a betrayal that I don't know personally if I would ever be able to forgive or forget. And I don't necessarily know if I want to read a book about the relationship finding redemption. That could just be me and my cold at heart. I don't know, but I'm not necessarily vibing with the synopsis of this one, but I wouldn't necessarily be surprised to see it on Book of the Month. All right, moving on, we have a book called The Magnificent Ruins by Nayantara Roy. It says Lily D is on the verge of a career breakthrough when she gets a call from her mother in Kolkata, informing her that she's inherited her family's sprawling estate. So she returns home after a decade with no contact. Her extended family isn't so easy to win over and to make matters worse, Lila is caught between her old boyfriend and her occasional lover, her star author, who suddenly wants to define the relationship. As Lila comes to terms with both past and present, suppressed family secrets emerge, culminating in a shocking act of violence. Lila has no choice but to finally address her family's inherited custom of keeping everything under the surface. Perfect for fans of Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keen and All This Could Be Different by Sarah Thanka Matthews. The Magnificent Ruins is an unforgettable novel about the millennial immigrant experience and the desire for belonging. So ultimately I find that a little bit vague, but I do know that Book of the Month really loves to feature books that cover the immigrant experience. They've been featured plenty of times before. And so I think that this kind of story is definitely right up Book of the Month's alley, especially with those complicated family dynamics and somebody returning home after many years. So this is certainly one that I think is a top contender for this category. All right, the next book I want to discuss is one called The Lazarus Man by Richard Price. It says East Harlem 2008. In an instant, a five-story tenement collapses into a fuming hill of rubble, pancaking the cars parked in front and coating the street with a thick layer of ash. As the city's rescue services and media outlets respond, the surrounding neighborhood descends into chaos. At day's end, six bodies are recovered, but many of the other tenants are missing. In Lazarus Man, Richard Price, one of the greatest chroniclers of life in urban America, creates intertwining portraits of a group of compelling and singular characters whose lives are permanently impacted by the disaster. Anthony Carter, whose miraculous survival after being buried for days beneath tons of brick and stone, transforms him into a man with a message and a passionate sense of mission. Felix Pearl, a young transplant to the city whose photography and film work that day provokes a sharp sense of personal destiny. Royal Davis, owner of a failing Harlem funeral home whose desperate trolling of the scene for potential customers triggers a quest to find another path in life. And Mary Rowe, a veteran city detective who, driven in part by her own family's brutal history, becomes obsessed with finding Christopher Diaz, one of the buildings missing. Price, the best-selling author of Lush Life and most recently, The Whites, has created a bravura portrait of a community on the edge of disintegration. Rich with indelible characters and high drama, Lazarus Man is a riveting work of suspense and social vision by one of our major writers. This definitely is a book that I am intrigued by because it is certainly going to be very, very character driven. You have a tenement in Harlem that has fallen to the ground. There are people missing. There are people who are deeply affected by this and you are going to have multiple perspectives on what happened, multiple characters that you're going to have to follow. And I am very intrigued. Another author that I'm not familiar with, but this is certainly one that I would love to see on Book of the Month. All right, and the very last book that I have for this category is one 
that is actually coming out at the very end of November. So this again has an equal chance of being featured in November or December, but it is definitely one that I have seen going around and I wanted to mention it here since it's of course a November release. This is a book called City of Birds by Juhia Kim. It says on a white night in 2019, prima ballerina Natalia Leonova returns to St. Petersburg two years after a devastating accident that stalled her career. Once the most celebrated dancer of her generation, she now turns to pills and alcohol to numb the pain of her past. She's unmoored in her old city as the ghosts of her former life begin to resurface. Her loving but difficult mother, her absentee father, and the two gifted dancers who led to her downfall. One of those dancers, Alexander, is the love of her life who transformed both Natalia and her art. The other is Dimitri, a dark and treacherous genius. When the latter offers her a chance to return to the stage in her signature role, Natalia must decide whether she can again face the people responsible for both her soaring highs and darkest hours. Painting a vivid portrait of the Russian ballet world where cutthroat ambition, ever-shifting politics, and sublime artistry collide, City of Nightbirds unveils the making of a dancer with both profound intimacy and breathtaking scope. Okay, so I do not believe that this author's previous work was featured on Book of the Month, but again, this is definitely a character-driven story that I do believe that they could feature. It dives deeply into what seems like it's going to be the dark world of the Russian ballet, and I think that could intrigue quite a lot of people. I think that there will be a lot of people really interested in this one. So I definitely think that this is another good contender for Book of the Month in November. All right, moving on into the historical fiction category, I only have two to talk to you about today. The first is a book called Eleanor of Avignon by Elizabeth Delosier. Provence, 1347. Eleanor Blanchett is a young midwife and herbalist with remarkable skill. But as she learned the day her mother died, the most dangerous thing a woman can do is draw attention to herself. She attends patients in her home city of Avignon, spends time with her father and her twin sister, gathers herbs in the surrounding woods, and dreams of the freedom to pursue her calling without fear. In a chance encounter, she meets Guijo de Choliac, the enigmatic personal physician to the powerful Pope Clement, and strikes a deal with him to take her on as his apprentice. Under Choliac's tutelage, she hones her skills as a healer, combining her knowledge of folk medicine with anatomy astrology, and surgical techniques. Then two pieces of earth-shattering news. The Black Death has made landfall in Europe, and the disgraced Queen Joanna is coming to Avignon to stand trial for her husband's murder. She is pregnant and in need of a midwife. The Queen's childbirth approaches as the plague spreads like wildfire, leaving half the city dead in its wake. People of Avignon grow desperate for a scapegoat, and a group of religious heretics launch a witch hunt, one that could cost her, an intelligent, talented, unwed woman, everything. That is definitely historical in nature. I think it's a little bit too historical for me. I don't think that this is something that I would enjoy but I know a lot of people would. This is probably one of the most notable historical fiction releases coming out in November and so that is why I wanted to feature it here. And then the very last one I have for this category is a book called The Sunflower House by Adriana Allegri. It does seem like this is a World War II historical fiction. It says, in a sleepy German village, Alina Strauss's life seems idyllic. She works at her uncle's bookshop, makes strudel with her aunt, and spends weekends with her friends and fiance. But it's 1939 and Adolf Hitler is chancellor and Alina's family hides a terrifying secret. Her birth mother was Jewish, making her a Mischling. One fateful night after losing everyone she loves, Alita is forced into service as a nurse at a state-run baby factory called Hockland Home. Here she becomes both witness and participant to the horrors of Heinrich Himmler's ruthless eugenics program. The Sunflower House is a meticulously researched debut historical fiction from Adriana Allegri that uncovers the notorious Lebensborn program of Nazi Germany. Women of pure blood stayed in Lebensborn homes for the sole purpose of perpetuating the Aryan population, giving birth to thousands of babies who were adopted out to good Nazi families. Alina must keep her Jewish identity a secret in order to survive, but when she discovers the neglect occurring within the home, she's determined not only to save herself, but also the children in her care. A tale of one woman's determination to resist and survive, The Sunflower House is also a love story. When Alina meets Carl, a high-ranking SS officer with secrets of his own, the two must decide how much they are willing to share with each other and how much they can stand to risk as they join forces to save as many children as they can. The threats of this poignant and heart-rending novel weaves a tale of loss and love, friendship and betrayal, and the secrets we bury in order to save ourselves. All right, that actually sounds very very, very promising. I don't actually know if I've read a book that covers this topic in this way. And it's also a love story. So you know I love me a good World War II historical fiction. Book of the Month also loves them a good World War II historical fiction. And so this is one that I would also be intrigued to see on Book of the Month in November. All right, and then moving on into the final category, which is fantasy, sci-fi, and magical realism. We, of course, have the newest release from Isabel Ibanez called Where the Library Hides. Book of the Month has featured two previous releases from Isabel Ibanez. So I'm absolutely positive they would feature this one as well, especially especially since this is the second book in a series. Because of that, I'm not really going to say anything about the synopsis because I don't want to risk spoilers. But if you really liked What the River Knows and you got it from Book of the Month, I would definitely be on the lookout for this one in November. This next one is definitely one that I've been seeing going around. It seems like it's going to be one of the more popular releases in November and it's called The Last Hour Between Worlds by Melissa Caruso. Kimberl Thorne has a few hours away from her newborn and she's determined to enjoy herself at the year-turning ball. But when guests start dropping dead, she can't help sniffing
sniffing out trouble. She's a hound after all, especially when her professional and personal nemesis, notorious burglar Rika Nonasuch, is also on the prowl. Everyone knows you shouldn't get involved with Echo games, let alone one involving ancient Echo lords who can turn layers of reality into a game board with human lives for pieces. But as the ballroom grows stranger and more otherworldly with each strike of the hour, it's clearly too late. Kim knows the rules. One Echo down is no big deal. Stay alert for trouble. Four Echoes down, there are things with eyes in their teeth and walls that drip blood. Four is the limit. As the party plunges through increasingly deadly realities, the rules can't help Kem anymore. She'll have to rely on her wits and Rika to unravel the most dangerous game of the century before it unleashes catastrophe on the world. All right, so that is very interesting, very unusual. I don't really feel like the synopsis tells us very much. It definitely sounds like it's going to be potentially more on the science fiction side than the fantasy side, but I did want to mention it here because like I said, I have seen this going around and it seems like it's going to be one of the more popular releases. And the last one that I have here seems like it's going to be the start of a new fantasy series from Sarah Hawley called Servant of the Earth. Kenna Heron is best known in her village for being a little wild, some say half feral, but she'll need every ounce of that ferocity to survive captivity in the cruel fake court. Trapped as a servant in the fairy's underground kingdom of Mistay, Kenna must help her new mistress undertake six deadly trials, one for each branch of magic. If she succeeds, her mistress will gain immortality and become the heir to Earth House. If she doesn't, the punishment is death for both mistress and servant. With no ally but a sentient dagger of mysterious origins, Kenna must face monsters, magic, and grueling physical tests. But worse dangers wait underground, and soon Kenna gets caught up in a secret rebellion against the inventively sadistic fairy king. When her feelings for the rebellion's leader turn passionate, Kenna must decide if she's willing to risk her life for a better world and a chance at happiness. Surviving the trials and overthrowing a tyrant king will take cunning courage and an iron will, but even that may not be enough. So this definitely seems like it's going to have at least a romantic subplot. I don't think this is going to be romanticy. I think it's going to be fantasy with a side plot of romance, and I'm actually really intrigued. It sounds like there's a lot of really interesting things going on here. I haven't heard anybody talk about this one, but I am certainly intrigued to know what people think. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are my predictions for what could potentially be featured as an add-on selection or as a main selection for Book of the Month in November. As per usual, if you think that there are any other potentially strong possibilities for Book of the Month, please comment them down below so others can know as well. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a crown emoji in honor of that last fantasy book that I talked about. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books featured in the video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.